My name is Bill DiRugio. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and I practice at Goldsboro Orthopedics. A lot of patients present to our office so with knee pain, um, some from degenerative conditions and some from uh, acute injuries, uh, sports or motor vehicle accidents. We'll try non-surgical treatment first. Uh, we'll talk to them about the importance of weight reduction because your knees are weight-bearing joints. There's some ratio between every pound you lose, you may take seven pounds of force off your knee. Um, we'll, we'll try injectable medicines into their knees and try and calm down their arthritis with those injections. Uh, maybe some physical therapy to strengthen the muscles around the knee. And if we can get those muscles strong, it stabilizes the knee, so then maybe they can tolerate their arthritis a little bit longer. But ultimately, when, when those things are no longer successful is when we talk about partial versus complete knee replacements. The beauty of the partial knee replacement is the hospital stay is shorter and the recovery time is shorter. Yes, I do have a, one gentleman who stands out. Uh, he's had both of his knees replaced. Uh, his name is Mr. Larry Gerard. And uh, I remember when uh, Larry first came to see me, he wanted to play golf. He was retired. But he came to me and he had tried all those things that we talked about. And we eventually came to the conclusion that a knee replacement was going to be his best operation. The literature will support somewhere between 95 and 97 percent success rates with joint replacements, hip and knee. We now expect over 20 year survival on most of the artificial knees and hips uh, that are implanted in this country. And 20 years ago, if you got 10 years, that was considered a good result patient who comes to me with knee pain, you know, when I first meet them, I'm trying to establish a little rapport with them to see what, what they're having trouble with, what activities they haven't been doing over the last several years because of their pain. A lot of my time on the visits at the office before the surgery is to talk to them about how they can optimize their health for the operation, getting their weight under control. If they're a diabetic, talking to them about sugar control. Uh, if they're smoking, encouraging them to quit smoking because we know now how bad smoking is for wound healing. Uh, because I know that their results are going to depend on how good their outcomes are. And those factors before surgery certainly play a role in their success afterwards. And in, in my practice experience, uh, I, I can definitely say that hip replacements and knee replacements are some of the most successful things we do to get people back on their feet living well. Mm -hmm.